Hi folks, welcome back to the Working with Shared Components. We're going to talk about the website name. So let's go and take a look at our example page here. Here's the website name. You probably will see something that's more in line with or in tune with the name of your theme or your template. Um, that's what we typically use for the website name up here. Uh, to change this, it's just a bit of text. It's, it's text wrapped in an H3 tag, which is helpful for search engine optimization. So anybody looking for the name of your company, the name of your website, or whatever text you type in here, will have a little bit better chance of, of finding that near the top of the rankings versus buried on page two, three, or four of Google. So let me just show you a couple of quick changes. We're going to, we're going to change the website name text then we're going to resize it and just take a look at uh, modifying the properties, so the color, the font style, that sort of a thing. We'll do that as well, all in one video here. So we'll start off by changing it and then resizing it. So let's jump into our web editor, and uh, first we need to update it. So we're going to go to our library, shared, and our website name page. We're going to open that up. Typically when I go to change this, I just uh, plunk right on the uh, H3 tag and then type in a new name, Collins New Logo, as an example. And the reason I click in the H3 tag and then type is because that way I'm typing into the H3 tag and I don't lose it. Sometimes when you type on the page, your web editor loses the tag and it just becomes something that looks like um, none, something like that. Even if you do that and you save it, we have styled the... Um, the logo so that uh, it will retain its look in, in terms of its fonts because we've we've styled for very uh, several variations no no particular tag or a p tag or an h3 tag those are the actual variations because those are the common things that folks would use but we've said we want it to look the same no matter what however when it comes to search engine optimization i'm going to suggest you keep it wrapped in an h3 tag Okay, so let's say we've, we've done that. And let's just say for fun, we want to resize it now. We, we want to make it bigger or smaller. Um, if you have a lot of words in your logo, and some organizations, some churches, uh, things like that, they have a lot of words that they use in the, in the website name, you probably want to use a, faller, a smaller font size. And I'm going to suggest that it, when it gets to three quarters of the length of the page or the width of the page, that you start to reduce the size. So that way, smaller browsers, you won't have the logo trying to wrap over into two lines. So to reduce the size of the font or change the size of the font, we go to our site, our styles, our styles.css. Now, we're going to have to scroll down a fair ways in here. There's a lot of information in this page. But we get to a certain section, somewhere just about halfway down, and we start off with website name. And all the different component styles for the shared components are pretty much listed in here. The font styles and all that kind of stuff. Everything you can change, we put into one spot for you. So you can just go ahead and change it right here and, and uh, make all your adjustments without scrolling all over the place. To change the font size, that's the font size right there. The color, the font family. Now when it comes to working with this, I'm just going to give you a couple of quick tips, uh, specifically the font family and the color, and from that, hopefully you'll be able to take those things I'm going to show you and apply to other styling later on. For example, the font size is a pixel size. You can put any number in here that you want. Just make sure the PX doesn't get knocked out of place. If we wanted a larger font size, let's go with 80. We type 80, we refresh, and away we go. But you notice that the positioning changes when we change the font size, right? That's typical. Because different font sizes have different natural paddings. Now, if that happens to you, when you change the font size, you need to scroll up near the top of the page here and look for the header component section. And you need to look for the website name position right here. Now, we've separate out, separated out the website name, the, the positioning, versus the actual styling of the components for a specific reason because when we come to uh, rapidly making updates to uh, the position of components in the site we've put them all in one area so they're easy to work with you to sort of scroll up and down and you can make quick changes um, it, it because it depends on your template this particular example of a template we have uh, the positioning is fairly important because there's bars and different things in the background where we can line them up against in other templates that have more generic backgrounds and whatnot, uh, a developer may want to just reposition things quickly in the page to whatever suits them, and this is why everything's sort of tied together. Okay, with that said, there's our top and our left positioning. So we're going to change the top position to zero, 
and uh, we're just gonna that's gonna knock it up 25 pixels or so and there we go now the logo is nice and centered there okay so let's go back to the uh, the rest of the uh, styling for the uh, website name here uh, to change a color my little trick for changing color is just to double click on the hex color value just whatever number or combination of six characters and letters are there just double click hit the backspace one two three four backspace it up until the R in the word color so your, your cursor is blinking right beside it then hold the shift key on your keyboard and the colon key and that's going to activate the color picker tool and then you just uh, double click on it and you can select a brand new color whatever you want to do here let's go green click OK and save and refresh now do you notice that I actually have a page the page that we're updating which uses the website name component because all the pages do um, I have it open in my browser I make changes in my style sheet I save the changes I go back to my browser and I hit refresh this way um, I'm making sure that I can get a quick view of what my visitors actually see very important and two um, I keep my style sheet or my website name I keep these two things whatever files I'm working on for that component I keep those open until I'm absolutely satisfied by looking in my web browser that the changes I made are the right changes that I, I have a I don't have any typos and and errors and things like that because it's a lot easier to do the uh, edit undo or control Z control Z in your keyboard than it is to open these pages back up go find whatever it was you're editing and try and fix it uh, for many folks especially new users it's almost impossible to do that uh, but you can certainly look at your page realize there's an error with something and just go back and undo it and start over again it's a lot easier that way okay finally with the font family we're using a Google font here to start with the dosis font um, is loaded in right up here import Google fonts dosis you can load in whatever Google font you want to uh, we cover that in other some other tutorials working with CSS and Google fonts but for this case I want to show you a trick to loading in a different font a web friendly font so if you don't want to use a Google font you just want to use some nice web friendly font just select the ones that are in there leaving the semicolon just get rid of all the select all the stuff in blue hit the backspace 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 once again up until your cursor is blinking up against the red lettering there hit the shift and the colon key and now you get a little menu that pops up that shows you some groupings of fonts that are fairly common to all computers and devices and even if those computers and devices don't have the font installed there's a backup for example Lucinda Sands okay we're gonna just double click on that one it puts a whole bunch of stuff in here <coughs> excuse me and if I don't have any here's how it works if I don't have Lucinda Sands on my computer it tries to display the Lindus, Lind, <coughs> Lucinda Sands regular if not that then the Grand if not that Unicode if not Geneva if not Verdana and if I don't have the Verdana font installed it just says Sans Serif a basic basic font so these are like the backups okay your your second string third string fourth string if you don't have the first one it goes to the second one then the third then the fourth how fonts work are very simple if there's two ways it actually works on the web now thanks to Google fonts or, or typeface fonts <coughs> um, to view a font in your browser you must have that font installed in your computer so if you use fonts like Lucinda Sands visitors to this particular website would have to have the Lucinda Sands font installed on their computer in order to see it if they don't then that's why we have the backups here it keeps going down the list until pretty much everybody has Verdana installed and if not it just uses a basic system font which every computer and device has that's just the way it works so you wouldn't be able to read anything um, the other uh, avenue is Google fonts you see we load this font right from the Google website basically when this style sheet is loaded it actually loads in the font family into the user's computer into their browser cache and then it can be displayed through the style sheet down below by basically saying you know the dosis we want to load dosis for the font family uh, and that's the only other way to make sure that everybody has um, can see the same thing that you're seeing and because Google has such great big large servers they're never down so there's really never a worry of, of uh, somebody not being able to connect to Google 
Uh, so let's just save our page here and we're just going to go back and we're going to refresh like so and there it is Colin's new logo. Now the funny thing is I don't have Lucinda Sands installed on my own computer. As a matter of fact I don't have many extra fonts installed. These fonts usually come in when you install programs like uh, Microsoft Office and, and things like that. These are where these, these fonts get installed. That's why they're part of the list because usually most people have them. I have a very basic font set on my computer so it's displaying the Verdana font. It's going all the way over here and displaying the Verdana font. Okay, So that's sort of an example for you of if you don't have certain fonts installed what happens. And that's one of the reasons why we like to use the Google fonts. Um, because all I have to do to display a Google font is load the font in at the top of the page here. That's the name of the font. I can just uh, pop it in right down here. I'll just create a little bit of space, doses, and then that's the first one that'll load in and then anything after that. There it is. Loads in right away. And I don't have that installed on my computer. I'm loading it from the Google site directly.